What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Man, after the last video, I've been getting a ton of feedback. People want to learn more and more about the Hack RF. Now, they do a pretty good job over at the wiki as far as explaining how a lot of this stuff works, but it's still pretty complicated in a lot of cases. Even with pretty good documentation, it's still very confusing. There's a lot of little settings and things that it took me forever to figure out how they work. And even still, there's a bunch of stuff. I have no clue how it works but we're getting there together. So for today's video, I'm gonna go through all of the apps on the receive side of things and pretty much go over exactly what they do and a little bit of information on how to use them. So that being said, there is a lot to go over. So let's get into it. Let's go. So first up, huge shout out to the developers of the Mayhem firmware. They just dropped version 2.0 of the firmware and it's even better than ever. One of the biggest updates is actually they moved the applications onto the SD card instead of being held internally. That means you can have a ton more apps, a ton more. Really, really cool idea. They now have working USB serial communication while in port pack mode. They also added a ton of serial commands. They have all new settings, including brightness and button color, which I love. They also added B BLE apps to receive and transmit. So guess what? You can do your BLE spam with your hack RF as well. Hey man, if you can't annoy everybody in your nearby proximity with some BLE spam, what's the point of living? All right, so let's pop over to the hands-on camera and let's go through all these apps and I'll tell you exactly what they all do. Well, most of them at least. Hey, here we are. And we've got my totally official legal in Canada hack RF stand, which is, you know, working really well right now. And you'll notice actually up in the top corner, they've added a brightness feature so I can change the brightness. That's actually a really big deal for because this is what it looked like before and now with the brightness turned down it looks way better now you'll also notice once we get into here that hey i've got different color buttons now again it helps a lot for filming plus it matches with my cool little purple pink kind of decor going on so if you flash the latest firmware all you got to do is go into settings and then all the way down at the bottom here you will have menu color so you can just change it there super cool and then just hold the back button and we'll get back to the main screen. So as promised, what we'll do is gonna go up into receive and we're just gonna go through all of the apps inside here. All right, so I guess first things first is gonna be ADSB, which actually means Automatic Development Surveillance Broadcast. Do you need to know what it stands for? No. All you really need to know is the fact that this is air traffic control, so it lets us view airplanes, which is really cool. Now I am gonna have to block some of the aircraft that are around me just so I don't dox myself because it will have GPS information. But yeah, you'll see right here, those are aircraft flying over my house right now. This is also our first introduction to these little adjustments down here for LNA, VGA, and amplifier, AMP. Now these are gonna come up over and over and over again in the Hack RF, so it's really important to know how these things work and kinda of how to work with them. Now one thing to remember about projects like this is that they were made by somebody and they had to go through design and create it and make the PCBs. Well, that brings us to today's sponsor, PCBWay. Hey man, I've said it once, I'll say it again and again and again. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for anything when it comes to making amazing projects like the Hack RF. PCBWay has got you covered from beginning to to end no matter what you guys need. They will personally assist you in the design and printing of PCBs. They can help you make 3D enclosures for them, absolutely everything you need just to make the coolest stuff possible. Look, I know you've got projects you wanna make and they're not always easy to do. I've got so many projects I'm halfway into, but PCBWay has helped make so many things happen for so many creators just like you. So head on over to PCBWay.com for a free instant quote. As always, thank you so much to PCBWay for all your continued support. You guys are are absolutely the best. Let's get back at it. So the first thing we have is our LNA. LNA is the low noise amplifier, which basically is trying to amplify only the signal that we're interested in. The VGA is a variable gain amplifier, and basically that's gonna amplify everything. Think of it as kind of a fine tuning adjustment. And according to the documentation, they recommend sitting between eight and 16. So we'll select VGA, and then we will go all the way down to 16. Just turn the dial and we'll get there. And 16. As for the LNA, recommendation is, you know, typically 24 to 32. So we'll set it to, whoops, go down to, let's say 32. Hey, editing Sasquatch here. So immediately after I finished filming this, uh, my buddy Snorin, who's the Hack RF master, definitely go check out his videos if you haven't. Uh, he gave me a really good tuning guide for the antennas. So it's a little bit awkward, but this is the transition to that part. So let's go. So here's a little bit of a quick and dirty tuning guide. So we'll just go to AIS Boats. You can do this anywhere, but it works well here. And and then what we're gonna do is press this button right here once and then twice. That should bring up our radio settings. 
Next to the radio settings, you're gonna notice the radio saturation. This is the important part. Now we're aiming for a radio saturation of about 80. So if you set things too high and it goes to 100, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have too much noise. You're not gonna be able to hear anything. So our first setting here is our amplifier. An interesting thing is that the amplifier can actually fail on you. So if you turn the amplifier off, which is the zero setting, if the saturation on your radio goes up after turning it off, that means your amplifier is broken. If the saturation goes up when you turn it on, that means your amplifier works. Now remember, we have two settings here. This is the LNA, which is kind of our, our large adjustments, we'll call it, and then the VGA, which is kind of our fine tuning. So ideally, you want to get to a saturation of about 80%, but you don't want to just crank the second option all the way up to 11, because it's going to, A, it's going to blow out, so you see how we're oversaturated, but it's not going to be as clear a signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down a bit. Let's set this down to like 32, and let's see how close to 80 we can get over here. So if we go up to 40, which is the top, it's as high as we can go. We're only at about 56, 59. So let's go from 32 on our VGA. Let's go up 34, 71. That's not bad. 36, 85, 100, 92, 85, 86. So let's turn this down. Let's sit it at 34 because I don't want to have too much signal. It's sitting right about 77. So that's a really good place to be. So now we know that if we use the amplifier setting of one and then the LNA setting of 48 and the VGA setting of 34, it's gonna give us a pretty good receive saturation. You can just mess around with things, see how it works. Excellent. So that's a good starting point. And now, yeah, you'll see right here, those are all of the airplanes flying over me and I can actually open those and see all sorts of great information. It's got the altitude, it's got the Latin longitude. I can even open it on a map. Again, I'm gonna have to blur it out just so people don't know exactly where I am, but it's a really cool feature. Even too, you can actually go and zoom in and out on the map, which again, you can't see, but it's the super, super cool feature here. All right, so back on the receive menu, let's go over to AIS Boats. AIS stands for Automatic Identification System, and it's basically just what boats use to communicate with each other and with the shore. Now you'll notice that we have this channel option. Now there's only gonna be two options, 87B and 88B. 88B works at a 161.975 megahertz channel. So basically it's just a simplex way for ships to talk to each other. Simplex is known as talk around. It basically means that sending and receiving are on the same frequency. So that means that nobody can talk over each other, just like a walkie talkie. That's why I mean, you know, when you hear people talking on walkie talkies they always say over at the end that's basically them saying that they're done speaking and the other person can start because again it's only one channel brian pick up over what brian please say over when you finish talking over what over do you see the wire yet over no no what over no over and then we have 88b 88b runs at 162.025 megahertz and is actually a ship to shore duplex channel what duplex means is that basically the radio station transmit on one frequency and receives on another. So full duplex just means that a radio station can transmit and receive simultaneously. Now, I am not particularly close to the shore. I also don't have a particularly well-suited antenna installed and it's just not gonna have the range. So obviously this comes up with absolutely nothing. But if I was closer to where a bunch of ships and stuff were, uh, that's where they'd show up. All right, moving right along, let's go over to back and we're gonna go APRS. Now APRS stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System. It's used by organizations like FEMA to send messages. Now these messages could be like GPS coordinates, uh, weather station telemetry, text messages, announcements, position, speed, all sorts of great stuff. Now you'll notice you can actually change right here, NA, Europe. So basically you're changing the region that you're in because they all are gonna be transmitting on different frequencies. Here in America, I'm at 144.3900. Again, we've also got our amplifier, which is gonna be zero or one. We're gonna leave it at zero for our stuff today. And our LNA and VGA again, just like we saw in our last settings. Right over here is actually volume. You can change the volume of it because if you plug in a headphone down here, you can actually hear when the pings come in. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go back to the receive screen and keep moving. Moving right along, we have audio. Audio is actually really cool. This is just a radio. So we can select between AM, uh, near FM, wide FM, and this is a spectrum analyzer. Now the audio app actually honestly deserves its own video, so I won't get too crazy into it, but just feel free to play around with it. It's really cool. If you plug in your headphones right here, you can hear audio transmissions and stuff like that. So 
just mess around with it and yeah i'll make a whole video just on audio all right so the next one we have is the ble rx which is ble receive now ble rx is going to receive basically advertisement packages the same ones that we can send with our flipper zero you can already see some of the devices that are just in my house going along but if we run say the lockup crash we can see what happens. Two very boring minutes later. Yeah, you can see all of the BLE spam that's coming in right now. That's super cool. It's great to actually see this thing working on another device. All right, let's stop harassing my neighbors and let's move on. All right, so next one is ERT meter. ERT meter is basically, it means encoder receiver transmitter. And it's created as basically a way of reading water and gas meters. So somebody could drive by and just read the meters without having to do anything. So you can actually see, I can read a few of them. So that's pretty fun. I don't know what that means, but hey, I'm reading stuff. All right, let's go back and keep moving. Next up is gonna be, whoops, I'm going the wrong way now, is level. Now level is basically just gonna show you some level meters you can see down here for any given frequency. So as you move around, it's gonna you know change different frequencies and you'll see things graphically down here. Uh, there's not a whole lot to do with this right now, at least not that I can show off or I can think to show off, but I know there's a ton of usefulness for this, but We'll have to get into that in a later video. Now let's get into a fun one, which is POXAG. So POXAG actually means Post Office Code Standardization Advisory Group. Basically, it was created by the British Post Office back in the 80s to control communications in Britain. All you need to know is that this is how pagers work. So, you know, the old school beepers, pagers, and stuff that people carry around, that used POXAG transmission. Now, POXAG is actually still used a lot by the government. It's used by, there's commercial paging operations, and there's a bunch of different bands. Basically, in the United States, FCC says that the POXAG is going to work in like 26.995. 27.045, 27.095, 27.1450, 27 27.1950. That's hard to say. Now, commercial paging operates on slightly different bands, basically in the 35 to 36, 43 to 44, 152 to 159 bands, and then also the 454 to 460 megahertz bands referred to as the lower band. Long story short, go out and research POXAG bands for your location and, you know, try some stuff out, see if you find anything. I haven't found anything yet, but I'm not entirely sure what band is being used in my area. So let's go back, keep moving. Next up is Radio Sande. I think that's how it's pronounced, but Radio Sande is a small battery powered instrument that measures atmospheric conditions and transmits the data down to a ground server. Basically, they're carried by a weather balloon. It, they're weather balloons, that's what these are. It uses a 402 to 403 megahertz range, so tool around in those frequencies and see if you find anything. I think it'd be really cool to find something, but the chances of a weather balloon floating near, I really don't know what the odds are, but I haven't found one yet. Let's move on. Okay, now we have Recon. Recon is another heavy duty app that I definitely don't have the time in this video to explain. Basically, it's a rework of the scanner app offering different possibilities and customizations. So honestly, this app's gonna have to wait for a later video because there's so much stuff in here, I don't even know a quarter of it, and it would be a disservice to you for me to even try to fake it. So. Let's just move around this one for the moment and we'll keep going. So this next app works kind of like the Flipper Zero sub gigahertz frequency scanner. So basically it's gonna look for a frequency like what we're gonna send right here. So we'll open the app and before I get background noise, I'll send it and then we'll see right here, boom, that's the signal that I just got. Anytime I send it, you'll see that right there, it'll go up. So if I send it again, right there, you can see that that increases. So that's exactly the frequency that I'm sending with my Flipper. Very, very cool. Now you'll see you have a minimum and maximum frequency. I've got this in a pretty narrow band uh, just to make sure I don't pick up too much outside noise. There's a ton of noise, especially in the 433 band. I got it to work and you can see exactly how that is. Just again, just mess around with everything. Obviously, as you see, you have your LNA and your VGA. You're going to have that on most of the things here. And then you can just change pretty much everything. Again, I'm not trying to get into any minutia with any of these apps, but just kind of tell you what they do and a brief idea of how to use them. Next one here is TPMS Cars. TPMS stands for Tire Pressure Management System. And yeah, if you have a car that has tire pressure sensors, that's what uses them. So I've sat around during rush hour. I've got a road that drives, you know, goes past my house like most people. And I have picked up some tire pressures. Pretty cool. You can yell at somebody that they have low tire pressure. Uh, not a ton of usefulness, but again, it's cool. I like it. It's fun to play with. Moving right along, we have weather. So weather basically is going to pick up weather, you know, wireless weather stations in your area. 
There are either ones that some people have, you know, may have in their house, or there are frequencies that individual countries tend to use. Like in the United States, it's about 315 right there, which is what I'm running. I haven't found anything yet, but again, I don't have a super powerful antenna, and I don't think I'm very close to any weather stations. I know this works, especially go outside. Most of the problems that people have with receiving stuff, the answer is go outside or put your antenna outside, which is a little bit easier for some people. All right, moving on, we have sub gigahertz D, which basically is a similar thing to the search thing, but this is just for sub gigahertz, and then we can set it to the same frequency, and you can see if I send on this, boom, 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 those are all of the bits that are sent. Those are the individual bits. It's really cool. I'm not really sure how to translate this to anything yet, but that's what this one does. It does the trick. Let's hit clear just for fun and we'll go back. Now, here's a familiar guy right here, NRF. NRF just stands for Nordic RF, which is the company that makes the chipset on there. And it's a proprietary low power, low cost transceiver at the 2.4 gigahertz range created by Nordic Semiconductor. Mainly used for remotes, keyboards, mice, things like that. You'll notice I have a ton of stuff running on this right now. It shows up all over the place. Now there's an add-on for Flipper Zero that you've seen me use before mainly used for things like mouse jacking you can see how much stuff is actually on here there's a ton of stuff running right now on that 2.4 gigahertz range okay so the AFSK according to the documentation is an application that's broken this is what it does it spits out gibberish the gibberish apparently means nothing this is all it does run the latest nightly builds and sooner or later we'll have this thing fixed last but not least is analog TV this is super cool however it doesn't work pretty much anywhere it's basically acting exactly like an analog TV antenna so what it's doing is it's you know going through the airwaves and it's looking for an analog TV signal now unfortunately in America there are are no official analog TV. Everything is digital now, so you can't pick anything up. A little bit of a bummer, but sometime in the future, I'll try to find a hacky way of showing out how this works. If I have another hack RF, I can actually transmit analog TV signal and then I can receive it. I'm not sure if that's some sort of FCC violation. I'll have to look it up before doing it publicly, but you know, really, really cool. So that's a roundup of all of the receive functions and kind of how they work and what they do. Man, remember, I told you this was gonna be a lot and there's so much great stuff to learn when it comes to hack RF. Remember, I'm learning right beside you. I mean, I went through and wrote this entire script up. Yeah, I wrote a script, well, an outline, and had to learn all this stuff. And while the documentation's good, there's definitely a bunch of gaps in it. Thanks again so much to Snorin for giving me basically the once up on as far as LNA and VGA goes and figuring out whether or not the amp worked. All right, so now what I need from you guys is to tell me what apps do you want me to cover first? Obviously, the radio and scan apps are gonna get their own videos themselves themselves, or at least maybe I'll put them into one video, but what else are you guys interested in? What else do you want to see me use? And then obviously I'll be going over all the other features that HackRF has, uh, not just the receiving functions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. HackRF seems to be getting more and more popular, and hopefully with videos like these, everybody will learn how to use them a little easier. You guys are the best. We'll catch you later.